I hate making videos like this. I've been putting this off for weeks and I do not look forward to it. The thing is, I don't like brushing my mistakes under the rug and pretending they're not there. I I'd rather just clean them up. And when you make as many videos as I do about upcoming video games and getting really excited and hyped up and getting you guys really excited and hyped up for those games, every now and then, one, two, or three of those games actually finally release and then not what I was hoping they would be. And in some cases, they're just awful. <laughs> If one of the games I talk about today just so happens to be one of your favorite games of this generation, my opinion on the game doesn't disregard your experience with the game. You can love something that I don't like, and I can love something that you don't like. That's how the world works. We're all special snowflakes. No two of us are exactly alike. For some reason, I really like the Super Mario Brothers movie, and no one else does. Probably shouldn't tell you that going into this video because now my opinions probably lost all credibility. When I say like, it's nostalgic for me. It's not a good movie, I just love it. <laughs> going into this year, I told myself I would make more content other than just Nintendo Switch content. It's just, I feel like 95% of you are here at this point to watch me talk about Switch, and then another 4% are probably just here for me because you enjoy watching my content and you. You are the special. I love you so much. And then the last 1% are probably just those that click on the video to dislike it. You're still doing God's work, people. Keep it up. So to ease everyone into this transition as smoothly as possible, let's start the list by talking about a Nintendo Switch game. Hey, there, it's like nothing ever changed. We're right back where we started. Also, I'm putting off talking about Kingdom Hearts for as long as possible. In my opinion, out of every game I'm talking about today, Travis Strikes Again is the most disappointing and the most boring. It completely crapped the bed. It's very obvious that this game had next to no budget and they worked with what they had, but unfortunately, it shows. It shows big time and there's little to no fun to be found within this title. In my opinion, if you love it, it's fine. I'm just- I'm just giving my honest opinion. I hate being given a code for a game I don't end up enjoying and then reviewing negatively, but also, I adore Pseudo51 and everything he makes. A lot of Pseudo's games are still some of my favorite games of all time. Lollipop Chainsaw, Shadows of the Damned, anyone? And then of course, No More Heroes 1 and 2, which is what led us up to this travesty. See what I did there? Travesty. So talking bad about a pseudo game is like me talking about one of my cats behind their back. It just feels cruel, sad, and unnecessary. But unfortunately, that cat destroyed the curtains, pooped on my bed, and then threw up on my downstairs rug. Travis Strikes Again, just like every Pseudo 51 game, is packed full with a ton of charm. Unfortunately, in Travis's case, all that charm is crammed right at the start of the game, like in the first 10 minutes, and gets old really fast. Mechanics that worked at the start of the game, but by the time he got to the end, they were tedious and played out. This game clearly has no polish or shine to it at all. There's just walls and walls of text with no voice acting, no cutscenes, no cool animations. Nothing really happens in this game as you slug through its monotonous levels. Progression feels cheap throughout the entire game. You can level up, which seemingly does nothing from what I can tell. It gives you a little bit of extra health and damage output, but other than that, nothing really. You do find chips that will allow you to unlock other abilities, but, and I'm not kidding here, you will find the best two or three abilities within the first 30 minutes of the game. They're super strong OP abilities that you would be stupid to change out to anything else you find. And you really only find a small handful of other abilities throughout the rest of the game anyway. Like maybe five or six of them and they're useless in comparison to the ones you get right at the start. So needless to say, the gameplay gets old quick with almost nothing to look forward to. And this game, in my opinion, does one of the biggest no-nos that a game of this style can do. The dodge roll needs to cancel out of any other move. Especially in this game where you build your special bar by not getting hit and when you get hit, you lose it. You can't help but get hit. There's seven enemies around you, they might decide to attack at any given time and if you've already decided that you'll make the first move, you're screwed and there's no way of knowing when the enemies are going to attack. That's why the dodge in these kind of games needs to cancel out the attack. If you don't have that control, it just feels like you're sitting behind the wheel 
middle of a tank and someone's trying to get you to do a backflip in it, but it's literally impossible. So the gameplay is clunky and it adds artificial difficulty, but honestly this game is not difficult at all. It is probably one of the easiest games I've ever played in my life, but we'll get to that. Speaking of the levels, there's only like seven of them, so let me break them down really quick. The first level would do its best to trick you into thinking that it's a kind of fun hack and slash game with platformer elements, but the first level, while it's okay, is really nothing like any other level in the game. In fact, every level is structured completely differently from the rest of the game, and it just feels super disjointed. Honestly, I didn't mind the first level. I saw potential here for a fun little game, but it's not long after this, it starts to outstay its welcome big time. So you've seen the first level. The second level is honestly pretty much the same, but it's set in some kind of factory, and the visuals aren't inspired at all. It's just bland gray metal floors as far as the eye can see. The third level is about when I was ready to give up and never play this again, but then I realized it's only a five hour game and I'm about two hours in, so I may as well just finish the last half of it. You know that mini game from Bioshock? Well, that's pretty much this entire level. You switch tiles around, making a path to progress towards a room where you quickly fight a wave of enemies and then you rinse and repeat that tile mechanic. You have to do this not only once or twice or, you know, the perfect roll of threes. No, you have to do this eight times. And let me tell you, it gets old after like, oh, I don't know, the first time. Level 4 is where a lot of people will probably give up for real on the game. You spend this level running around a mansion trying to figure out what doors to go through. In reality, you could probably speedrun this level in under 30 minutes if you knew which doors to pick, but there is no rhyme or reason or order to it at all. You will spend way too long just running around in circles, trying to open locked doors and going through ones you've already been through. And even when you're on the right path, you're still just mindlessly hacking away at the same enemies you've been breezing through for the last three hours of gameplay. The fifth level is where it stops even even being a video game. You have these racing parts where the bike is on rails, it drives itself, and all you have to do is change the gears. It is stupidly easy and may as well just be a cutscene. Like, there is no losing this part of the game. Other than the fact that you need a certain part to beat each level, otherwise it is impossible, but you just get that part by talking to someone on the phone and then destroying a wave of enemies, and then you just go back into the bike part and try again. You just rinse and repeat that a few times, and that's that level. The sixth level is unfair. Finished. Literally. They say that's the joke, and I mean, it fits in with Pseudo's sense of humor, but I mean, if I was making a game on a limited budget and I ran out of money near the end of the game, I would probably pull the same trick knowing I could get away with it. Oh, this level is unfinished, hee hee ha ha. Weirdly, this unfinished level is more visually pleasing than any other level in the game. And then the last level is probably the only level worth actually talking about, and if I do talk about it, it's kind of major spoilers. So there it is, that's the game. And did I mention that in between each of those levels, you have to sit through walls and walls of green text? For seemingly no reason, because as far as I could tell, these parts didn't tie into the overall story. Maybe they did. I ended up skipping all of it because it was just so not engaging. I feel like they missed the perfect opportunity to make this a text adventure. Adventure game. What frustrates me the most about Travis Strikes Again, I feel like this game is holding No More Heroes 3 at ransom. The developer has pretty much said if you want No More Heroes 3 on Switch, this game better do well. There's even a reference to that fact in the game, in that green text part. To hold a game we really want, the third game in a series of games at ransom, depending on the success of a completely different game that just so happens to have the main character from that series in it. It would be like if when Nintendo released Pokemon Quest, they said this game better do well, better have a ton of microtransactions if you ever want to see a new Pokemon RPG. They're not the same thing. Like just because we enjoy that game a lot doesn't mean we're gonna enjoy this other weird quirky version of that game. And this one wasn't free. You had to pay 40 bucks to buy into this one. And if this game doesn't do well, which I'm guessing it ain't going to, we still better get No More Heroes 3. That's all I'm saying on that. I really don't want to talk about this next game. I just don't, I just, I, I just don't. <laughs> I feel like I want to apologize to the developer of this game because it's an indie game, right? It's like a really small team of people that made this and for what it's worth, the passion is there. You can tell the love and the effort is there and they seem like such great people that just did their best. But it's a game that I really hyped up and, and I talked about a lot 
and it, it just didn't end up hitting the mark and being where I where I needed it to be. And that game is Y2K. Y2K is a postmodern RPG set in the style of a game like Earthbound. You could almost see it as a spiritual successor to the game. And to their credit, they did an amazing job with the atmosphere, the setting, the visuals. It really does feel like I am playing an Earthbound game. But everything other than that sadly starts to go downhill pretty quickly. The story has some mystery and intrigue about it, and it made me want to dive into the game a little more and discover what the heck was going on, but sadly it was clouded by these horrible characters. Namely, the main character of Alex. He is just for lack of a better word, a pretentious a-hole that I just could not connect with at all. The great thing about games like Earthbound is you get to name your character and he doesn't really have a personality. You get to adapt your personality to it and go on an adventure with that character as if it was you. In Y2K, you are given the character of Alex. He is a hipster, which I had no problem with. Well, I'm a little bit hipstery myself. I lived in Seattle for a while and then Vancouver. I don't know. I feel like I could in some way associate with this character of Alex before I met him. Him. He, his dialogue is just so pretentious and he's fully voiced which I appreciated that effort but oh my word is he boring. And it's not so much the way that it's voiced while it is very monotone throughout pretty much all the dialogue. It's just there's so much expository dialogue. He even has these moments where he goes into his own head and he explains to himself everything that's already happening. Like he'll have a conversation with a character and they'll go back and forth for just so much dialogue. And then randomly it'll jump into Alex's head and he'll talk about the conversation he's having and how he's feeling about it, but it doesn't add anything to it. I'm trying to bring myself into it and interpret the conversation my way, but then you have Alex kind of telling you how you're supposed to interpret the conversation and really he's just repeating the conversation. So the story for me is muddled by all of that and I couldn't fall back on the combat for some fun because it gets repetitive super quickly. I really do like the creativity behind how you attack in this game. Like with Alex you have a record and you have to hit certain parts of the record as it spins around. It's all about timing and if you hit enough of the marks you do more damage. Kind of, but not really though. Even when I hit the nail on the head every single time and max out those quick time events it doesn't really add any data. It doesn't really change anything at all. It's like I may as well just not have bothered. And the way you attack never changes. They don't put the marks in different places on the record to mix it up. It's always in the exact same place. So it feels like you're just doing the same thing over and over and over. And at that point, I'd rather just not even play the mini game. And I would just rather him attack like a normal turn-based RPG. And that goes throughout all the characters. They all attack in very unique and different ways. But it's the same unique and different way every time you attack. And the load screens are, are insane. Like even back on PlayStation 1 with Final Fantasy 7, you know when you hit one of those random encounters and the screen like breaks and shatters and whatever, and then you're right into the battle. But for some reason, here in 2019, sadly, Y2K couldn't figure that out and optimize it well. There's a loading screen in between the random encounters and it takes way too long. The time it takes to load into a battle is the length of time one of these battles needs to last period, especially with a really weak enemy that you just want to take down and be on your way. In any other RPG, you would have already finished this battle. In Y2K, you're still loading into the battle. And then once you're in it, you still have to go through all the motions that are the combat. By the time that's finally done and you're back in the game, you just don't want to fight anything else for the next half hour. It's so close to being a gem of a game. I feel like it needs like a revision, like a re-edit, like a Y2K remaster where they seriously hack down the dialogue and then go back in and tweak the gameplay mechanics just a little bit and you might have something really special. But in its current form, it just doesn't hit the mark. Kingdom Hearts holds a very special place in many people's hearts. Pun not intended, I realize what this game and this series means to some of you. And honestly, the first two games mean a lot to me. So I realize everything I'm about to say about the game is probably gonna upset a lot of people and you can voice your opinions down below. Again, it's just my opinion. Bear with me here while I get through this. I only ever played the first two games and Birth by Sleep. There is just so many Kingdom Hearts games and the only other one that appealed to me that I didn't play was Dream Drop Distance and I just never got around to playing it. I was well aware that integral story elements were scattered among all 20 billion of the Kingdom Hearts games and I was going to be somewhat confused going into this game. I mean, heck, it's been a while since I played those other games, and I, I remember those being very confusing, and I don't exactly remember what happened in those games. I was okay with me being confused. I didn't realize that even the characters in the game were going to be confused about what's going on. The story just seems so convoluted now that even the developers were having a hard time trying to figure out how to explain it. And instead of showing us throughout the game what happened in the previous game so we have some kind of context, they have the 
characters cryptically and very confusingly just saying it to each other. And every time they do try and explain it, they explain it almost like they're confused. Like they're asking a question like, did that happen? I don't remember. And for me, that completely throws off the Disney worlds they go to. Like they went to Toy Story. How cool is that? You go and meet Buzz, you go and meet Woody, all those Toy Story characters. But all those characters end up talking about are their hearts or asking questions about Donald, Goofy, and Sora's past. They don't actually end up getting to be their characters and talk in a way that their characters would talk. Rather, they end up talking like Square Enix characters and it loses that Disney charm and everything about it ends up feeling kind of Final Fantasy. Might as well slap a giant sword in Woody's hand and call him Cloudy. Even with all of these complaints and me being totally confused and the characters being confused, I, I was kind of expecting Donald, Sora, and Goofy to be in amongst this amazing adventure. But instead, the only driving point to the game is I have to reawaken something in Sora, and even 10, 15, 20 hours in, it's not really even all that clear who the bad guy is, like what the purpose is, what I'm actually doing other than trying to reawaken something in Sora. There's no motivation. There's no reason for me to keep playing. There's no cool story element happening exclusively in Kingdom Hearts 3. There's nothing special to this game that's happening that's driving me forward. It's just the past. It's the history that's getting recorded regurgitated and thrown into this title and that's supposed to make me want to keep going even though I'm completely confused about what's happening and what's the first scene we get them in they're just standing in that wizard's room all static and boring like talking to Grandmaster Wizard about the fact that Sora lost his memory we couldn't have rejoined their group in the middle of like an intense battle with some awesome cutscene where they're all working like a well-oiled machine I expected it to hit the ground running and be an action-packed adventure but rather than hitting the ground running it was like they got a wet fish and dropped it on the floor and that was the start of the game and I kept waiting for it to pick up and go somewhere exciting and it just never really did the gameplay feels very polished though I really enjoyed enjoy how smooth it is, how flashy it is, how crazy action-packed the gameplay is, but is it just me? Or does it feel like you are just constantly spamming X until an action to press triangle comes up and then you hit triangle and then whatever that craziness is, whatever carousel or water ride that ends up being, nothing was more effective than just spamming X as much as possible and throwing in the occasional triangle here and there. I didn't feel motivated to keep playing so I stopped and I, I don't really have a reason to pick it up and keep playing other than I want to get to some of the Disney worlds I haven't seen but if they're anything like the other ones I've seen maybe it's best off I don't ruin it for myself. Really quickly, I want to throw Jump Force into this video. I barely even had this game 24 hours, but immediately when I started playing it, I was sorely disappointed and then even took to Twitter and recommended people don't go out and buy it. It might have been just a teeny tiny bit hasty on that tweet because for the first hour or two I played this game, I hated every second of it, but then I managed to find some fun in it. And I wouldn't say I'm totally disappointed in it at this point. The reason why immediately I didn't have any fun with this game is because the story is tr trash. I, I don't really have another word for it. I hate it. I don't like it at all. It's very boring. And there's a billion load screens throughout the entire game, even in the cutscenes. Some of the characters look flat out scary. And it just feels so lazily animated. The entire story is delivered by characters standing around in one spot. And if you're lucky, they'll blink and move their head around because you could tell they clearly couldn't be bothered to animate made anything else or they didn't have time or resources to. And if you think the loading screen stopped at the story, oh boy no, there's a loading screen for everything. Have you ever seen a game that has to load the start menu options? So that's what ended up happening. I played this game for about an hour and a half after I picked it up. I spent about an hour of it in loading screens. My first battle was with the creator character that I had to make for the story and it was just bad. But as soon as I was able to take control of other characters like Midoriya and freaking Yu-Gi-Oh! And then of course my favorite favorites being literally any character from the Hunter x Hunter series and that is solely right there those four characters the reason why I even bought the game I actually started to have some fun with it they've done a really great job at utilizing the characters traits and their special abilities they all look very flashy and cinematic especially the ultra ultimate abilities I absolutely adore guns and it just is legitimately fun to play at that point and I don't think it's one that you should stay away from no matter what if it looks like something you might enjoy you will probably enjoy it. It's way better than J-Stars. It's way better than any other game like that that I have played. It looks a little rough around the edges, especially after seeing something as gorgeous as Dragon Ball Fighters. So a little disappointing for me, 
but it might be fun for you. Well, I know I probably upset a lot of people. I hope you understand that it's all just my opinion, my experience with the games. I love so many games. I play so many games, but I'm, I'm just not going to enjoy all of them. And these are just a few that I didn't have fun with. But I would love to know your thoughts down below if you like this video. And I really hope you did regardless of your feelings about all of it. Please hit that like button and hair flip all over that subscribe button because I'd really appreciate it. Click the tap on this video right here because I talk about games that I actually love. Oh boy.